So I presented the RMS trial on behalf of Professor Hui Xing Chen in Shenyang, China, and his colleagues, because he wasn't able to make it. And um, the trial is addressing patients with minor ischemic stroke, which is a, a common problem in our daily work, comprises about half of patients that we see coming through the emergency room. And um, the question is, what is the best management of these patients? There were some leading studies in the international stroke trial, number three, that showed a subgroup analysis of these patients did quite well with intravenous rhombolysis compared to standard medical treatment, albeit this study was conducted between the early 2000s. And then this led to the PRISMS trial led by Professor Pooja Khatri, which was a randomized trial dedicated to patients with a minor ischemic stroke. And what they found was that alteplase was not superior to a single agent uh, aspirin. And um, unfortunately, the trial was terminated early for administrative reasons. And the conclusion was that we cannot draw definitive conclusions because I think only maybe half the sample size was reached. Nonetheless, um, in the meantime, we studied patients with minor ischemic stroke with dual antiplatelet therapy up to 12 and 24 hours via the, the CHANCE and the POINT trials. And uh, it was found to be quite effective in preventing recurrent strokes and uh, reducing disability at 90 days compared to single agent aspirin. So we think we already have a potentially uh, a good therapy for these patients in the 12 and 24 hour window. And the question now is, how does that compare to intravenous rhombolysis in the four and a half hour window? Because that has not been studied. So Professor Huixing Chen and his colleagues in China undertook the Aramis trial, which is antiplatelet versus RTPA in acute mild ischemic stroke, all these acronyms. And um, uh, they randomized patients one-to-one -one between standard dose intravenous alteplase, 0 0.9 bags per kg platelet therapy with clopidogrel 300 milligram load on the first day and aspirin 100 milligram on the first day, followed by 10 to 14 days of 75 milligrams clopidogrel and 100 milligrams aspirin. And so what the trial found was the bottom line was uh, dual antiplatelet therapy was not inferior to intravenous alteplase, which could help physicians make decisions about how do we treat these patients that present to the emergency room with non-disabling deficit. And that means in this trial, an IH stroke scale of five or less. And uh, if you were in the uh, NIHSS item scores of vision, language, or limb weakness, you could not have more than one point in that category because that would potentially be considered disabling. So we were emphasizing the non-disabling group because that does happen not uncommonly in our practice. And um, you could not have any alteration in consciousness because that could easily be a stroke mim mimic. So uh, these were the patients that were included in the trial. <laughs> what is being already done? And it's not clear. Uh, the 2019 AHA ASA guidelines were updated after the PRISMS trial was released to state that Alteplase would not be recommended in these non-disabling stroke patients. And so whether or not that has taken transition or, or application into clinical practice is, is a great question. We don't really know that. Um, mean, in the meantime, if you look at the Chinese Stroke Association guidelines, the last edition in 2019 stated that it might be reasonable to consider intravenous alteplase in these patients with non disabling ischemic stroke, or it could be considered. And so it's not, hasn't been completely annihilated to give intravenous alteplase. And it's still in our mantra, in our psyche, whenever we see anyone within the first four and a half hours, our immediate reflex is to think, are they a candidate for alteplase or tenecteplase? Uh, because that's obviously a, a major transition these days. And so it's still in our mantra and it's still in our, in our DNA to think about alteplase because we are so anchored to that in the first four and a half hours. We're not as anchored to the dual antiplatelet unless it was maybe a, a, an isolated numbness. But um, uh, it would be interesting to understand what is the current practice because it probably varies across different regions of the world.